and welcome to another episode of Real Talk with Terry, and I'm your host, Terry Cato. I'm excited to welcome to the set Miss Aisha Ash, who is a retired professional ballerina, and she is the founder of the Swan Dreams Project. That's correct. I'm honored to welcome Aisha to the set, so welcome. Thank you very much, Terry, for having me. Yes, <laughs> and we're going to jump right in. Okay. I want the viewers to hear all about what you're doing in the Bay Area, what brought you here. So first of all, if you could just um, tell the viewers a little bit about yourself and what actually brought you here to the Bay Area? Absolutely. Well, my name is Aisha Ash, as you said. I'm a former professional ballerina for almost 14 years. And I started off dancing in New York City, and then I traveled to Europe. And then what brought me to the Bay Area was I, got, I started dancing with Alonzo King Lines Ballet in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. So that's what brought me all the way back to the United States and particularly the Bay Area. Awesome. Uh, I then got married, had kids, and it was after retiring that uh, this sort of desire of why being began ballet in the first place really started to kick in again and it was after giving birth to my first child which was my daughter mm -hmm. I really started thinking you know what what can I do what can I do to continue that mission mm -hmm. and that mission was you know sort of challenging the stereotypes that exist for women of color right and so that led me through many things led me to the Swan Dreams project and that's what I'm working on now. I'm the creator and the founder of the Swan Dreams Project. Awesome. And at what age did you start ballerina? Did you start your dance career? Yeah, <laughs> so I started dancing all together at the age of five, but it wasn't ballet. So in the beginning, I was not interested in ballet. I wanted to, I was doing jazz, tap, lyrical, and every form of dance, seriously, mm -hmm. besides ballet, because my desire was to be on Broadway. Um, it was then it took um, a teacher coming into my studio saying that I had some promise in ballet and to get better at the other forms of dance, I need to take ballet a little bit more seriously. Mm -hmm. So I began to take ballet seriously around the age of 10 and a half, 11. Okay. And as you know, mm -hmm. uh, that's a little bit late mm -hmm. for ballet. And it was very late for me because I wasn't a natural mm -hmm. at it. And so it, it took a lot of work, a lot mm -hmm. of hard work. Mm -hmm. So that meant, like you said, you had to work like really hard just to yes. get to where the other girls were. And that's actually the age of my daughter right now. She's 11 and yeah. she's a ballerina. Uh -huh. And the exact same advice you were given, kind of ba ballet is mm -hmm. the foundation mm -hmm. for Absolutely. all of the dance forms. And to have a really good foundation in ballet, it helps you in other the dance forms. Yes. So that was great advice. And my daughter actually received the exact same advice. Okay. So with that being said, um, what exactly is the Swan Dreams Project? And how did you come up with that name? And could you just Tell us a little bit more about the project and what you all do. Absolutely. So the project just stemmed from this idea of, you know, to backtrack really quickly, um, I came from the inner city of Rochester, New York. That's where I was born and raised. Mm -hmm. I, in the inner city, I was part of this uh, program called the Urban Suburban Program. Mm -hmm. And that's where inner city kids get bussed out to a suburban school. And so from a very young age, I, I encountered a lot of um, adversities when it came to not only my color, the color of my skin, but where I came from. Mm -hmm. And then that, you know, led me up into my career as a dancer when I began, my mother began searching for summer camps, which is what kids do mm -hmm. in ballet. They, after the, a certain point, they start auditioning for summer programs. Mm -hmm. And my mom began to inquire, what are these summer programs? You know, what do kids do? She was warned that it would be difficult as a woman of color to enter the ballet world. And being a young kid from the inner city, facing those adversities and always wanting to challenge them. Even as a young kid, I wanted to challenge them. I thought, well, this is great. I can challenge it through my art. Absolutely. And so when I heard that, I knew that ballet was something I had to do. So as a professional dancer, that was something I sort of really pushed and pursued ballet for that reason, because I wanted to show the world in general that a woman of color is more than a stereotype on the screen, that we can be princesses and angels and we can be angelic and ethereal. Um, and I did that through my art form of ballet. And once I retired, I retired a bit early. Uh, that dream was still inside of me. I felt that I never fully accomplished what I wanted to, mm -hmm. um, that I didn't have the, as big of an impact as I wanted to. And so I was there one day with my daughter and she was just sort of playing around the coffee table and an image came on the television, a very stereotyped, vulgar image that we are so used to seeing. And I got very fed up mm -hmm. and I then just got very sad thinking, this is what I fought my entire career for. And now I just have to sit back and take it. Mm -hmm. And I thought, 
no, I don't. There's got to be something I can do. But I'm certainly not going back to dancing six days a week, 12 hours a day. Mm -hmm. I'm a mother. I'm very happy doing that. I'm very happy with my retirement. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't have any desire to go back to dancing professionally. And then it reminded me, I started thinking about an image that was at the School of American Ballet when I was a, a young dancer. And it was of then dancer Andrea Long, which was a, a, a young black dancer who, when I was in the school, she happened to be in the company. But it was a picture of her from the school. And being the only black girl in the school, she stood out in that image. And so on those days when I was just feeling down and out, I was living in New York City away from my family in upstate New York, I would look at that image and it would empower me. It would give me strength and courage to go, if she can do it, I can do it. You know, I'm sure she was battling the same things. I can do this. And just that one singular image gave me so much encouragement mm -hmm. that I thought, well, that's what I can do. I can use imagery. And so I chose a photographer in my hometown. And I you know, had this idea of this large campaign ad where I would just take images and sort of post them all over the inner city of Rochester. Mm -hmm. And as I started to do research, I realized how very expensive that was going to be and saw that that was not something I could afford and do. So I had a Facebook page. I said, let me just put them there and that'll be you know, my sort of clap back mm -hmm. at you know, every negative image I see the society keeps putting forward. I'm gonna put something positive, something that I feel that I want to represent myself and my community and, and women of color. And it was from that that it just, the response I got back from that sort of developed into this thing bigger than what I had imagined. Mm -hmm. And people began asking for images and, you know, uh, asking me to come and do speaking engagements or teaching free classes or signing things and giving them away. And it began this sort of project, this sort of social experiment. Mm -hmm. And the idea of a swan, when mm -hmm. one thinks of a swan, they think of, you know, Swan Lake, they think of ballet, they think of elegant and ethereal. And because it was my project, it sort of became, um, you know, the swan and then the dream aspect was, the idea of my dream of becoming a ballerina and the dreams of those within the inner city communities and sort of all of our dreams. And that's where the idea of the Swan Dreams Project came along. And I basically use imagery mm -hmm. to counter the stereotypes that exist in society. Right. And you know, my, my motto is, you know, beauty and grace are not defined by status or race. Love um, it. That they are boundless and, and endless. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I love that. Could you just say that again? Beauty and race. Are Beauty and grace race. are not defined by status or race. I love that. That's absolutely <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and, and by the way, um, I love your Facebook page and your Thank Instagram you. page. The imagery, the imagery, like you said, is very powerful. And I was just up late just scrolling through pictures <laughs> like, oh, my God, this is so amazing. Thank you. Thank and, you. you know, just how you dress up with your tutu and we see the brown ballerina yes. out in the inner city on yes. the street. And people are so inspired by that. I mean, I was inspired looking at the pictures and I'm kind of in the world of ballet yeah. with my daughter. But still, you know, just seeing you out there in a tutu in the inner city and how mm -hmm. the children are like looking up to you yeah. and you're showing them. That's the best it. part. Isn't that the best? <laughs> it's so sweet. I mean, the images yeah. are absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. So, um, so I hope people will definitely look at and follow your Facebook page, which is the which is which is the Swan Dreams Project. The Swan Dreams Project, yeah. and the imagery is beautiful. And you also have Facebook and Instagram yes. where you share the images of what you're doing. So we're gonna um, take a break, and okay. we're gonna come right back. So stay tuned, and um, we will be right back. Thank you. Welcome back to Real Talk with Terry, and I'm here with Miss Aisha Ash, retired professional ballerina, and we're just going to keep talking. Um, so I want to know um, a little bit more about um, the Swan Dreams Project and just what is your mission and what do you hope to accomplish with your nonprofit? And just um, if you could tell the viewers a little bit more about, you know, what is your mission and, and what do you want to accomplish and, and what we're what right. brings us to this point? So the, the mission of the, of the Swan Dreams Project is basically to challenge stereotypes, to show the world that, you know, we are more than an image on the screen. Women of color, especially those from urban, inner city environments mm -hmm. like where I was born and raised, mm -hmm. right? That, that it's more than just what we see time and time and again showed to us mm -hmm. throughout, through the media. And, and especially giving the images uh, to 
people not only back in our community but the world, but especially young girls, you know, that they have something to look at and go, okay, well, this is not the only option for me. Absolutely. That's one option, but there's also B and C and D, and that they, they can see the plethora of options that are for them, that we are not, um, we are not a singular story and that we are limitless. Mm -hmm. um, and th that I feel like we don't see enough. And that Absolutely. I had to fight that throughout my entire career. Um, and, you know, basically I felt, I feel as though, as I was stating before, that the Swan Jays project was just me wanting to get images out there. It was strictly just images based. It was my, you know, shout out to the community that, you know, look, we are more than, than what you constantly see of us. Um, and what I got back from the community was just so much. And I feel like that the project has, it, it continues to morph mm -hmm. into what is being demanded of me. Um, and what I see and what I am seeing of the project and where it's going now, besides just the images and, you know, I have a site where I sell the images and 100% of those proceeds go right back into the project. Awesome. Um, what I am seeing uh, f the, for the future for the project is what, not how I developed it, but what I'm seeing and what is, I'm going to be able to do, which I'm really excited this August, is I've started a Swan Dreams camp. I'm going to start nice. a Swan Dreams camp. And I had this vision in 2011 awesome. when I started the project. Mm -hmm. um, as I started seeing things come back and seeing, you know, what can this do besides just me putting images out there? Mm -hmm. As I thought, what better way for me to give back all that I've gained by being a professional ballerina mm -hmm. and being able to share all of the things that I've gained back to the community without a kid having to be a professional ballerina because not everybody's going to be. It's a very tough career. Mm -hmm. uh, not everyone, you know, it's such a small fraction of the community that become professional and get into a company. But there's so much that I've gained that I want to give back. It would be that, you know, the art of ballet in itself, mm -hmm. classical music, even ballroom, uh, fitness, be that yoga, Pilates, teaching nutrition, mm -hmm. teaching health and body awareness. Absolutely. Um, and so I sort of put that all together in a camp. I pitched that to the commissioner of Rochester, New York, and they loved it. Awesome. So I'm really excited that in August I get to do that. And what I would love is mm -hmm. be able to, if that goes well and is successful, be able to bring that to the Bay Area. Awesome. Be able to bring that to San Jose. That's great. So that is so exciting to hear. So the camp that you're going to do this summer is actually going to be in Rochester. It's going to be in Rochester. Oh, it's my hometown. I know, I know. I understand. That is, I'm so excited <laughs> for you, you. But yeah. that is like so disheartening for me <laughs> because we're here in San Jose. But, yeah, but, but. That's progress, and you have an example. You'll have an example, exactly. And hopefully, it's definitely something that I can bring back. I can bring back. I'm praying that all goes well, and that I'll be able to bring that to the bear because I live here now. Right. And of course, I would love to have something ongoing, mm -hmm. if if not an ongoing after school program, right? A, a summer camp, or even just those those um, when we have those breaks in the spring, just having that short like week or two week spring camp, but definitely something ongoing that Absolutely. I can offer the community. So how can the community help you accomplish this goal? Because like you said, you made the presentation to the commissioner in Rochester or in New right. York. Like, what is a barrier or do you have barriers? A lot. Um, like, what do you need from the community? Because I'm just hoping that somebody that's out there watching now, they will see this and then you, by you sharing what you need, they can say, you know what? She has a need and we have a solution. Yes. So put it out there. Just put it <laughs> yes. into the atmosphere. <laughs> yes. Yes. I'm lifting it up and putting it out yes. there. So one of the, the one of the major things that I see right now and has been such it's it's so funny because now working in this nonprofit world, mm -hmm. I what I'm discovering is even though you're trying to give something free, it's still hard to get any reception back. Yes. And what's been and I guess because I'm not, you know, I have been been born and raised in the Bay Area, I don't have a large foundation footprint here. Mm -hmm. I'm still fairly new. Um, is finding who to reach out to right. but I find that what I'm finding difficulty now with is space space because I would love to be able to provide provide a, a, a free you know after school class mm -hmm. for not only kids though but for also adults because Absolutely. I do teach an adult ballet class and I feel that even as adults and you know parents that are struggling you know they put their fitness and their health on the back burner to be able to provide some, you know, free classes for them, be that if they're interested in taking, you know, beginner ballet class Absolutely. and discovering what that is like, if they're interested in taking a Pilates class mm -hmm. because I'm a Pilates apprentice, discovering what that is like, um, be able to provide those classes free. And what I'm finding is 
space is very limited. limited. And especially that after school time. Yes. There's time, I, I can find times in the morning, but people are working, people are right. busy. Mm -hmm. But finding that after school time and finding an affordable space yes. um, has been rather challenging okay. for me. And okay. I've reached out to community centers, I've reached out to libraries, but it's still, I'm finding, I'm finding it very difficult. Okay. So the, so the first need is obviously space. space. Because, I mean, I can totally envision this because as a ballerina parent or as mm -hmm. a ballet parent and a dance parent, um, I can't tell you how many parents we just kind of sit around yep. for two, sometimes three hours while the kids are rehearsing. Mm -hmm. And I have thought over and over, this would be so amazing if all of us could just get together and be exercising. Yes, <laughs> instead of sitting and waiting. Sitting and waiting. Yes. And I would even just do it on my own. I would walk the perimeter of the parking lot. I would do stretches. Oh, I would wow. bring my weights wow. when my son was much smaller and I was trying to lose some of my baby weight. Yeah. I still got a few more pounds to go. <laughs> but <laughs> that's exactly what right. I would do when my daughter, she was practicing for like two, two and a half hours. I would just put my son in his in the jogging stroller and we would just walk. Good we would just you. walk the perimeter. We would walk up and down the streets. Right. So I was like, it would be so nice to have some of the other ladies that are just sitting in the lobby talking exactly. and sometimes gossiping <laughs> right? <laughs> to be out. And, work. and you're a Pilates. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't it's say it's a Pilates. It's, like, it's a Pilates apprentice, Pilates which is apprentice. basically you're, you're you're able to teach, and it's you're sort of leading up to getting all those teaching hours. That would be and leading amazing. Up. Exactly, that would be amazing if while the children are rehearsing, you could be teaching the parents Pilates or exactly. doing a Pilates class. Exactly. So I know that there has to be space out there. Yes. I know that there is. Um, so yeah. we are just putting it out there that um, somebody will come forward and reach out to you because they have the space, they have the availability. Um, there are a ton of community centers. And I, my daughter, she even started out when we relocated to the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. That was her first dance class. It, it was, was a at a community center. center. So I know that they have dance studios. So it's just a matter of finding the it's right one. It's a matter of finding one. them. And, what, and one of the things that mm -hmm. we've been running, in, what I've been running into right now is that if they, if you know, offering the free class, you know, some have said, well, we already offer for free ballet class we don't want any other competition mm -hmm. um, but besides the space because they're costly mm -hmm. is if they don't have a space at least make even if it's just a five dollar donation mm -hmm. to keep those donations coming in yes. so that I can keep putting that money towards funding space because it's mm -hmm. you know it's fine for me right now I have enough to do one-offs yes you know doing it here doing it there maybe a couple classes here a couple of classes there but then that's gonna eventually run out right you know but okay. to be able to keep getting those donations coming in so that we can afford something and eventually mm -hmm. the dream is to be able to have my own space that would be where awesome. I could do this ongoing have my classes that are paid because I have to have you know keep a roof over our heads right. and the lights on but be able to through this Swan Dreams project have my Swan Dreams scholarships where kids can come in, adults can come in who cannot afford and be able to not be limited. And I can say, you can afford, you can come in and take my class. That's awesome. Regardless. That's awesome because I will be real, as a dance parent, dance classes are not cheap. No, especially not. the higher up you go. Yes. Um, and it, even in ballet, because just the equipment, you pay for the classes. And then, like my daughter, she's on point now. You have to pay for point shoes. Absolutely. And God knows. The point shoes are not cheap. No, they're not. So and they, and they run don't last through, forever. And they don't last forever. No. Um, so it's just amazing. And, and then, like you said, the higher up they go, they start doing summer camps yep. and these intensives. So that's more cost. money, and that costs money. It costs it's a lot, a lot of money. So I really feel for people who may have an interest and they may not have the resources to do exactly. that. So I think it's very honorable. I think as much is very needed to have a service like yours in the community because I don't think ballet and dance should just be limited to those who can afford it. Absolutely. I think that anybody who wants to take ballet and dance in general, they should be able to take classes because like guys always say with sports and football, it teaches you teamwork and Absolutely. discipline. I feel like it dance does that. It does. I was like, I, I feel like my daughter gets a lot more than just, you know, learning how to, I guess, go up on releve and doing this and doing that. I feel like she learns a lot more about, you know, posture and how to carry herself exactly. and about discipline and about being organized and keeping her stuff structure. together. Structure. I mean, she learns um, so many other skills mm. than just 
this dance or ballet from taking these ballet classes. She learns about responsibility. It's exactly. like this is extracurricular. You get to do this because you keep your grades up and because you do well in school. Exactly. So as long as you do well in school, then we'll make sure that you can do dance as long as you want to do it. So I love um, all of the extras. Mm -hmm. And it's wonderful exercise. It's fantastic exercise. <laughs> she is in amazing <laughs> shape. <laughs> I just look at her like dance body and I'm like, this is it's amazing that all of the girls, yeah. they're in amazing shape because they're conditioning, they're dancing, they're stretching, they're moving. And even besides that, I have mm -hmm. to say what I've gotten back from my adult students, mm -hmm. um, I had one student who she was in a particular spot in her life where she was, you know, out of school working on her writing and she was just in a place where she put her her needs as far as you know fitness and health and all that on the mm -hmm. back burner mm -hmm. because she was like I can't afford this right now I need to focus on other things mm -hmm. and I discovered that and I said you know come to my class for free and mm -hmm. she's an adult student mm -hmm. and she gained so much from that and it's and I teach my adults it's not about having the perfect body right. we're not preparing for La Scala you know we're not going to be in Swan Lake mm -hmm. you know but we're here just to learn you can still benefit from all the things that ballet has to give to you and I feel that a lot of adults just go well I've passed that age I'll never be in a ballet company so I'm never going to go back to it mm -hmm. and what I find that my adult students they learn and gain so much from ballet and they keep coming back because of everything that ballet is giving to them Absolutely. and it helps them and it's you know it's that cross training and they they use some of the things and skills that they've learned and gathered in ballet class and they use it for you know their other classes their yoga their crossfit their bar. whatever else they do what their is a bar. bar i call it bar you know bar. <laughs> it is it's their bar it's, bar. it's bar classes mm -hmm. and they all of these little they can go slow and meticulous and ask me questions and they're it blows their mind even just driving the car there how many students tell me like i drive my car different you know, I open my cabinets different. It's just you know, posture. my shoulders are just yes. more relaxed. I feel mm -hmm. my posture better. I can feel my abs. I never felt my abs before. Mm -hmm. And that's all just from taking a ballet class. Absolutely. So there's a ton of benefits. So it's not, so the end game doesn't have to be, I want to be a professional no, dancer or no. I want to do nutcracker no. or I want to do, there's just health benefits yes. that come from dancing and being a part of a ballet class. Absolutely. So we really want to get this message out there and my hope and prayer is that the right person will watch this yes. and they will see you <laughs> Yes, <laughs> and they will reach out to you because we will have your website and your social media handles up so that people can reach out to you. So before we close, mm -hmm. I just want to... Um, do you have any advice for um, any young person or anybody that might be in the world of ballet right now? And we know how it's very competitive and um, it can be very disheartening for um, young girls of color. Yeah. Um, do you have any advice that you would give to them to just stay the course and just any advice that you could just share with anybody that might be struggling in just the world of dance and ballet right now? I think one of the... For me, the biggest advice, because there's a lot out there, and it's a lot of motivations and sports motivation, that is just the same thing that I would just reiterate. But for one of the, the pieces of advice that I, I should have taken for my own self, mm -hmm. um, and I tried, you know, and I learned later on, was not to be hard, so self-critical that you've put yourself under. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the hardest things, I think, for any dancer, um, that continue searching for that positive imagery mm -hmm. continue searching for things that lift you up mm -hmm. because there's so much in the media you know you I left the dance world you know you go to open fairy tale books or little kids things and there's nothing that looks like you mm -hmm. continue to search and find those things that those people in your life those messages those images that continue to lift you up and makes you feel good about yourself Absolutely. because there's going to be so much in society and especially as dancers we're so self-critical there's so much negative self-talk that we do mm -hmm. we have to learn how to quiet that quiet that that negative talk it's okay to be critical um, but we have to quiet that and tame that a little bit mm -hmm. and, and to continue searching and surrounding yourself with that positivity because that's going to be such a, a motivating factor. Okay, thank you. Awesome. Yeah. And um, before we wrap, is there anything else that you want to share with the viewers or tell people out there? Yes, please just go to www.theswandreamsproject.org. You'll find all the information on, on all of my social media. There are ways to donate, uh, ways even just to buy a small image, give it out. Um, Please also contact me if you know a community center school anywhere that could benefit from the imagery. I do offer free images to 
um, schools and organizations that are in need because I, the most important thing is getting those images out there. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, thank you so much for coming to the show. Um, this has been wonderful. It's been so inspiring and uplifting. And my hope and prayer is that there's somebody out there uh, that will see you and it will just inspire them to just From your not, <laughs> yes, to not give up, to not quit, but to just stay the course, to just stay with it. Um, because there's so many benefits from dance and, mm -hmm. you know, ballet in specific and just realizing our dreams, just not giving up, but just yes. staying with it. Yes. So um, I always like to close on something positive. So um, just remember, well, first of all, thank you again for tuning in to Real Talk with Terry. And thank you again for coming to the show. Thank you. And I like to close on something positive. So just remember that yesterday is history tomorrow is a mystery today is a gift which is why we call it the present so please make this 24 count thank you and have a great day